gospel according to St. Luke. I'm going to be in chapter 21. I'm going to start at verse 25. This is Jesus saying this. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then Jesus told the disciples a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on your guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that have, will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Amen. Hey, it's the first Sunday of Advent. Calm down. All right, <laughs> calm down, please. I know I expected a cheer at least, Jay. Why not? Yeah, you cheered last time. He got all his cheering out in the first service, so. All right. Advent. Advent. Okay, we got, we're got Advent season. This is the first season in our church year, okay? So this is the start of a new year, all right? Advent means arrival, okay? That's what it means. It means arrival. We don't use the word Advent that much in, in our vocabulary, but arrival we do, all right? You don't go to the airport to pick up someone who's departing, all right? You go to arrivals, right? You go to arrivals to pick up people who are arriving, all right? Now, in the Christian church, what this Advent season is and means in Advent, when they say Advent, we're going to take that word arrival and we're going to turn it just a little bit to mean the coming. The coming. All right? Or better yet, how about this? For us, we hear today the second coming of Christ. And uh, i got to tell you, although it's been on my calendar for quite a while, Advent still surprises me. Because uh, I always think there's plenty of time to get ready for it. Am I the only one? That, I always think there's plenty of time to get ready. You know, I check the calendar. Yet it always seems in the end, as I ease back you know, on the couch after Thanksgiving dinner, it dawns upon me, Advent is here. <laughs> it's upon us. Uh, I mean, in Advent, it's a season of anticipation anticipation we're looking forward to that arrival all right we're looking forward to that arrival and it seems to come in this we got to get ready we got to get ready we got to prepare comes at kind of when our lives are in the midst of all their fullness and messiness we got a lot going on we're wrapped up or we're wrapping all right, presents for your pastor as usual. All right, I mean, so many things we got to wrap up that we can actually be surprised that the very thing that we're planning for actually comes. It's upon us. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. Today is the Hope Sunday, as Patty shared as she lit the first candle in our Advent wreath, reminding us of the hope we have in the arrival of Christ, the second coming. So I want us to have a different mindset. Here we are at the start of a new year. We talked about, 
you know, our, our New Year's resolutions, right? We already talked about that a little last week. So we need to talk about having a New Year's resolution, to have a new mindset in this season, this Advent season. I want us to actually live like Advent is not something that we're about to endure. All right? I mean, I want it to be something that we actually become. Something that we are. I want us to be a people who live in anticipation, a people who live in hope of what is to come. I mean, I want it to be the very essence of our being. I want it to come out. So on this first Sunday of Advent, we're going to heed the call to pay attention. I mean, our life is a life of fullness and joy, but it is also a preparation for even more fullness. All right? Fill my cup, Lord, fill it up. In our Wesleyan tradition, we call that fullness sanctification. A rather big word, all right? And it's kind of better, it's less risky than saying perfection. Our perfection in love. Now we prepare for eternity, for God's kingdom, for perfection by living attentively. We might not really be shocked by the arrival of the, the Advent season, but we are deeply startled by our continuing need to actually be reminded that we are called. And we actually do want to live in hope, but we are always having to be reminded so our worship in this season is going to be an aid in the preparation of a, a, actually a reminder to look up and to get ready. That's what we're going to be talking about. Our Bible readings for the first Sunday of Advent, to me, they always sound scary, okay, in this season. All right, they sound scary, you know. You got all this turbulence in there. You have Jesus talking pretty wild about it, too. Jeremiah going about it. All right, they always sound so scary because they remind us that even good things bring about changes or adjustments, even good things. Even things that we long for sometimes don't fit into the life that we've made because we've been living without what we really wanted and we've made a life without that. And if we actually got it, the making of an alteration for it to fit into the life we've made might not be easy. This is why we're being reminded here in God's word that the world as we know it is not the last word. And while our hearts long for wholeness, especially for the broken in this life, and while our hearts long for peace, especially for those who have only known war, and while our hearts long for fullness and healing, especially for those who are hungry and hurting. If all those were to be satisfied, it would probably actually unsettle us for some time. We would, we would we'd be unsettled. Let's go back to what Jesus was talking about. Here's how Jesus spoke of those days that are coming in our gospel reading from Luke this week. Jesus said there would be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations. Nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. The sea and waves, that always in our Bible represents chaos. Chaos, all right? They don't actually represent real ocean water, all right? Chaos. Because of all this distress, chaoticness of our world, Jesus says people will faint from fear and foreboding. Foreboding is worry, okay? Fear and worry, they'll faint. Of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Now, I'm not sure how you receive that sort of information uh, on the first Sunday of Advent. 
I know I would rather hear about those preliminaries uh, that were going on of the Christmas story, maybe an angel announcement to Joseph and an angel announcement to Mary, you know, and an angel announcement to Elizabeth. You know, aren't those happy days? Those are happy little stories, yeah. Maybe a song of transformation sung by Mary. Maybe a dream or a journey or a royal decree from Caesar. Those stories, they'd be fun. But certainly not people fainting with fear and worry. Is that the Christmas story we're used to? Hmm. I'm not sure I'm up to foreboding. I don't use that in a sentence, so I'd have to just go with worry. Because we just don't forebode anymore, do we? But then again, if we re-examine today's scriptures, we find those verses, they actually imply something different. Maybe it isn't fear that Jesus is trying to instill. Maybe it's something altogether different. Maybe it's the opposite. And what's the opposite to fear? It's hope. Jesus says to us, stand up, raise your heads. Because our, our, our instinct when things are going badly or when the moment is difficult is to keep our heads down, to hide, take cover, right? So that the bad things might miss us. Pull the she sheets and covers over your head. But Jesus tells us something odd because we're an odd folk. He tells us to raise our heads in those times. To raise our heads. To look up. To trust. To have confidence. To pay attention. Hmm. To pay attention. That's a tricky one. It's a tricky one at any time of year. To pay attention. With all the distractions of the holidays here. Thanksgiving, Christmas, all that kind of stuff. It's even more difficult. Pay attention. That's what Jesus says to us. I'd say back, but I got all these things to accomplish. I've got, I've got my whole Christmas list to shop for yet, plus a list of things to do, places to go. I got things to do. Jesus says to us, pay attention. I say, to what? To the end times, maybe? But uh, I, I, I don't know if I'm an end times preacher. I've seen those folks before on TV. Uh, you know, on some of my, my favorite shows that I used to watch uh, in the mornings. Uh, they seem all wrapped up in the kind of thing. and They seem a bit odd, a bit out of touch. They, I don't know if they got all their priorities right. They seem a bit messed up. If the message is all about taking care of yourself, to stay clean so that you come out well in the end, I'm afraid if it's all about me taking care of me, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Jesus says, pay attention. You hear me? Jesus says, pay attention. So I think we need to pay attention because Advent comes at us in multiple levels. There's a remembrance part, all right, a looking back, all right, the desire to recapture the birth of that baby again. Isn't baby's birth exciting? How many say yes? How many say yes? How many say no? Because you got to go. you got to go. All right. Was that you? I hope you're combing the hair. All right, so he was. He was running his fingers through his hair because he knows I can't do it. Um, rub my, I can't even rub my hands through his hair. That's, that's all. I don't know. Really, that'd be weird. Yeah, it's cool when a baby comes, right? So that's why it's part of the joy of us going over the Christmas story, looking back at Jesus' first coming. We really want to hear about that angel song over those shepherds. Because when we do, we believe that if even for a moment, peace on earth is within the realm of possibility. So we look back. 
to what has been done for us. But at the same time, our scriptures remind us that there is still a coming, a second coming on our horizon. We do look for the kingdom when the lion will lay down with the lamb, when they'll beat their swords and weapons into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks, and that there'll be war will never be studied again. <laughs> there is a someday out there, friends, toward which we yearn, which we lean towards, for which we hope for. And Advent is looking forward as well as looking back. Pay attention. That's what Jesus said. I always, with this looking forward, looking back, I wonder if there's one more layer, one more direction in addition to the back and forward that Jesus was talking about that this Advent season is about. And I got to tell you, I, I think it's the direction we should go is around. Around. Look around. Look around right now. Don't spend all of Advent season looking back. Don't spend all looking forward while we're in this Advent season, sisters and brothers. Let's look around us. Let's look around us. We look up, we look down. <laughs> Just look. Take a look in the midst of this season. Jesus says, be on your guard so that your hearts aren't weighed down. I think he was saying, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss him in, in this season by looking back or looking forward. Look around for the Christ in our midst. Be the Christ in the midst. That's the amazing thing about this season. There are glimpses of this kingdom of God in our world throughout this season. If we don't look around us, if we don't pay attention, we'll miss it. Looking back or looking forward. There are sightings of the Savior in the twinkling of eyes in the stores, in your house. Maybe in the mirror when you look. Sometimes you see the glimpses of the kingdom of heaven, even in late, con late night conversations with scattered family members who've joined you for a dinner. Maybe there's a sparkle of the kingdom of heaven as you offer hope by giving some direction to what they should expect next. Maybe there is the kingdom of heaven in your prayers. Prayers of hope and love. Maybe in an embrace of peace. A good hug that brings a tear to your eye. Jeremiah says it simply, the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise that I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days, the prophet writes, God will execute justice and righteousness in the land. By now, I think that'd be a surprise, wouldn't it? Justice and righteousness. Almost incomprehensible. Almost too much to believe, almost too much to hold on to, or to prepare for. Almost. Almost. But that's what Advent asks for us and of us. Advent asks of us to believe in what seems unbelievable. To hold on to what seems beyond our grasp. To live, to prepare to live as though it was the way we were going to encounter every day. When we walk out the door, when we get out of the bed. This is why the prophets are guiding our guiding image this week. 
They, they lived for preparation, the prophets did. They saw what was, and they heard what could be, what should be, and they lived right there in that tension. They were Advent people before we were. So we live that prophetic existence today, friends. We live as a witness to what could be, what is coming, surely coming. That's our hope. That's our preparation. The days are surely coming. Like unexpected family, like unexpected hope, like justice and righteousness. And it will be to us great joy. Thanks be to God.